Hello everyone and welcome back to Roll the Credits. Today we're going to talk about the new Netflix show, Sex Education. I wish my mom was a sex guru. So, why don't you start by telling me your earliest memory of your scrotum? Trust me, you don't. So, this launched on Friday the 11th of January. It's eight episodes, they're all about an hour long. And the main plot of the show is that it's kind of set around these three main people. They're in a high school, well it's a secondary school in England and it centers around the main character of Otis Milburn who's played by Asa Butterfield and then his best friend Eric and then a new person that they befriend called Maeve. They start helping out the students in the school with all of their sex problems and you might be wondering how the hell do they have the information, the education and the knowledge about these sex problems that these kids have. Well, the good thing about Otis is that his mother, Jean, is a sex therapist. So he knows everything that has to do with any issues that you may or may not have with sex. The only thing about Otis is that he is 100% inexperienced when it comes to sex like to the point where he can't even touch himself because he's just so uncomfortable with the whole idea of sex and just masturbation and everything like that so he takes what he's heard and been educated by his mother and takes it into practice in school to help out the kids with their issue and together him and Maeve they start making money from it and creating this whole business around sex educating their fellow classmates. Sex therapists? This could be awesome. It could be popular. And like with any high school drama, there is always, always some dramatic scenes. There's love interest, there's betrayal, there's finding yourself and all of these other themes that have to do with being 16, being a teenager in your later years and all that comes with it. I wish I could be a normal kid with a normal dad, with a normal dick. So yeah, I really want to talk a little bit about the cast because it is a stellar cast. Most of these names I've never heard of. Obviously, we have like the main character who's played by Asa Butterfield, who is known for like the Boy in the Striped Pajamas, Hugo, and a couple of more films I've never actually watched, but I have watched those too. And then obviously the woman who plays his mother is Gillian Anderson, one of my favorite actresses, and kind of like the reason why I heard about sex education even being a thing. And she is just fantastic in this role. She's usually just playing like super, super serious roles, but here she's like getting high with people from Otis' school. And she's just like, Kind of like a cool mom but also like super not cool because she's a sex therapist and that's a little bit awkward especially if you're a teenage boy but she just plays this role so freaking well and then there's also a guy who is a swedish actor called Mikkel Pashbrandt who plays Jacob who comes into like their lives as their plumber those are pretty much like the biggest names that i heard of and then there's also obviously like the fantastic like supporting cast so all of Otis's friends the guy who plays Eric Shooty Gatwa he is absolutely amazing I just love his complete sassiness and he come he completely just like embraces the role so fantastically and I'm just like completely in love with Shooty at this moment also Emma Mackey and Connor Swindles just like embraces their character so well I always find it really difficult with like teenage shows because obviously often they have to cast people who are older to be able to like carry out the themes that are in the shows especially a show like this sex education it, they literally like have they don't actually have sex but like there's a lot of nudity and and there's kind of risky scenes and there's people like smoking weed and getting drunk and stuff like that so there's like quite serious themes and themes are like related to any high schooler to be honest but I just like how despite these actors not being 16 in real life they play it really 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 well my one issue with this show like there's really just one issue and it's how Americanized it is it's really weird because Netflix British TV shows do really really well abroad like people like the crown is one of the biggest things on planet earth it's like the biggest netflix production to have ever been made and it's all about like the british royal family but making a tv show about british high school apparently has to be like packaged into this weird americanized thing and what i mean about this is that so otis's new friend Maeve, she starts dating this guy who's on the swim team which is a little bit weird because never in any british show has there really been like a sports team he also wears a letterman jacket which is such an american thing to do so it kind of looks and feels like an american high school when it's actually set in britain somewhere for me it kind of feels like netflix or the creators of the show 
just didn't feel that a British school environment would be able to be marketed globally which is really weird because like skins did it really really well it just feels like they wanted to make it a little bit more sparkly and nice so they made it very Americanized but that also took away from the fact that it was set in Britain because it, they just it just didn't link properly if you get what I mean so the Americanized high school being the only negative thing I have to say about the series let's talk about some of the best things this is a new frontier my sexually repressed friend our chance to finally move up the social food chain so something that really stood out to me and a lot of other people is like the 80s vibe of the entire show like the aesthetic of the show is very 80s so it just means that the clothes they're wearing and the way that they graded the series is very 80s it kind of looks like the breakfast club and all of those like high school dramas set back in the 80s and what was odd was in the beginning i was like wait is this based like is this set in the 80s and then all of a sudden one of the characters mentioned Pornhub and I was like okay yeah definitely not set in the 80s because there was no internet back then and they have like their cell phones and all of these things it's just the aesthetic of it all like the car that his mum drives the bikes that they have the clothes that they have the just the, the overall look of the show is very 80s some people don't like it I actually really really like it because it just proves that the like the thought that went into the production design there's so much time and effort and so much like heart went into the show instead of just like producing a fun high school drama and just like shoving it into like a normal high school setting they actually put a lot of time and effort into it and going off of the 80s vibes the music in this show the soundtrack of the series is freaking amazing like i would definitely go on spotify and try and find a sex education soundtrack because the songs that they put in the show are just perfect like it's one of the best soundtracks for a tv show i've ever heard and the series also explores some really important themes and i think that they do it really 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 well so obviously with high school it, there's a lot of bullying and there's a lot of like people not really knowing who they are and through that they bully others like in that mid stage of being kids and being adults and they don't really know where they are in the world they think they have more responsibilities than they should have and things like that and i just feel that the series just explores these themes so well without doing them over the top and without baking it too much if that makes sense obviously the biggest theme is sex so so it's just about 16 year olds, they're all having sex and whether you should have sex or shouldn't have sex at 16, people are more experienced and less experienced than others and then there's obviously the main character Otis who has no experience at all and then his best friend who's gay who has had some experience but still not had all of the experience that for example Maeve has so it's just it's just about like different people at different stages of life but being at the same age it also tackles a huge topic of abortion so there's a character I'm not gonna say who uh, who finds out she's pregnant and she decides to go to an abortion clinic the fact that they actually showed her going into the OR and getting put under to have her abortion like I just felt that that was such a powerful move and a very very brave one to do as well because abortion is completely acceptable it's the woman's choice and i just feel that they did it in such a good way even though she is just 16 or 17 however old she is it's just a powerful moment in tv history isn't it? and obviously it comes to the theme of trust and who you are friends with and things like that so with Maeve, Otis and Eric that little trio just them three are such a good like catalyst to the entire like series itself because their friendship how Otis battles his friendship with Eric and Maeve like who he spends time with he's got different things related to different people then also like his trust to his mother a sex therapist who knows about her son's inexperience with sex and decides to like explore that a little bit more do a little bit more research and then the trust between mother son trust between best friends and like falling in love and all the things that relate to teenage years but yeah sex education is one of the best netflix series that i've seen i haven't seen a lot of netflix original productions because i do find that they're usually not really my thing but sex education was really really funny unfortunately it's just eight episodes and i have my fingers crossed that we get a season two because i would really like to see them explore what happens past the last episode because it really did leave us wanting more if you haven't watched sex education i recommend that you hop onto netflix and watch that asap it's 
eight episode you will be done today and you will thank me for telling you all about sex education so yeah that is my little review of sex education please leave a comment down below if you have watched it or if you recommend any other netflix show i should watch or if you want to see me review anything in the future please leave a comment down below also subscribe to the channel that would be lovely i am making reviews and talking about film and tv every saturday on this channel so do make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos so that has been it for this episode um what can i say roll the credits i still think it's weird a teenage boys a sex therapist